there's a few things I'd like to go over as far as what causes the 299. The 299 is when it could not reach the desired boost pressure. It's almost always related to a turbo sticking, binding, or an air leak. If you have a scanner that you can monitor BGT, then it's, it's your best friend. The turbo will work on a percentage from 15% to 85%. And it normally, with the exception of if you have a custom aftermarket exhaust with no catalytic converter, you might see 85 at an idle. But normally it never hits the 15% or the 85%. So if you're going down the road and you're monitoring the VGT and you see it sticking at 15 or 85 percent, what the computer's doing, it's duty cycling the actuator to trying to get the desired boost and it can't reach it. It'll turn the percentage on, on, on until it reaches the max. Whether it be 15 or 85 percent, that's going to depend on which way the veins are stuck, if they're open, if they're closed, or what the desired is. So you, you can see where monitoring your VGT can be very helpful for you. Also people's driving habits can affect it. If you got one person that's light on the throttle, those veins only move a little bit. The next person gets in there, they're moving it, you know, from working it from one end to the other. That's where it starts to get into new territory and it starts to bind up. So it's important driving habits can affect it, the amount of time the vehicle sits can affect it. So all these are questions you can ask your customer or things you may look for um, when you're trying to diagnose it. The most common things that we'll see is the upper charge air cooler hose. Normally if you just take it when it's on the truck, just squeeze it, feel it, look, it'll normally split around your clamp area. So make sure you squeeze around your clamp area and check there. And your most vulnerable hose is this one. This is your upper one, it's closest to the turbo. It's the smallest, so it has, it gets the most pressure. It's also the hottest, um, the closest one to the turbo. So this one definitely has the most stress and it's the most likely one to fail. The second most likely one is your your lower one, the lower charge air cooler. It, it may fail too, same thing, just squeeze it and look for it to see if it's split anywhere. Again, it usually happens around here where the um, rings keep it from over inflating or around the clamp. So especially check those areas. Another area that you would like to check is the charge air cooler comes apart itself. I've never seen it come apart on the driver's side. It's always the passenger side. If you pull this back here and look down at the charge air cooler, you would normally see some kind of sign that it's coming apart. The, uh, the charge air cooler is here, it looks kind of like an end of a radiator and if it did come apart you normally see the gasket, it's a uh, normally an orange or a blue silicone seal and it'll be popped out. What I always do is I start off with, anytime I do any threads, I'll always spray with WD-40, it's just a good practice to do. Also with a clamp, you want to mark it, the main part that you want to mark across the actuator it helps. Also if you make it in the housing just make a line some kind of scribe or something just so you know where everything goes. It, it speeds up your reassembly process. Anyhow with it marked and with the W40 I'll spray it around the entire clamp. It makes it come off a lot easier. That also works for when you're removing the turbo. If you spray, same thing, spray your threads, spray the clamp where it goes together here and on your exhaust downpipe, here, it makes it a lot easier to get apart. It, they'll actually usually just come right off if the if the lubricants got through and made good penetration. You usually just separate, come off. No hassle, no problems. Uh, anyhow, with the turbo off, loosen the clamp. What I do is I just separate it and I just keep it open by putting the threads, I lock it against the, the shaft where it goes through and that holds it open for me, makes it easier. With the clamp off, again WD-40 along the seams. I lift it up, I hold it up here. You can hear it separating here, the tone changes. This is your unison ring. It, it's it's the area, if, if you see them, you want it to be nice and free like this. If it's free like this, if it's free and it moves, you have play, most likely you can get away with cleaning. If you had to pry it off, you know, get a screwdriver in there, pry it off, or if you see that you don't have much movement in there, it's probably not going to help to clean up. Also when you have it off, one of the things you want to look for is for anywhere where the shaft, the actuator is turning it, you want to look for any signs of wear inside here. 
This one doesn't look too bad. We'll reuse it. One of the ones that's bad, as you can see, is one that's worn to where it's more like a bean shape like this. This one's not real bad, but it's bad enough that I wouldn't chance using it again. So anyhow, with it apart, what we do now is we take all the veins off. If you don't see too much wear, um, it, it's you probably get again you get away with cleaning it. If you see gouges or the rust, you see heavy pitting to where it's actually deteriorated so bad that your that your rings that your veins will bind up. I would not try to clean it. It's about time to replace it. This is not serviced separately. You do have to get a whole complete turbo. What I do to clean it, I just take a Scotch Brite pad and we cut it down. Take my scissors. Cut it down to where you have about a one inch surface area to help clean it. Then here we'll... Now the main thing we're looking for is any areas where the veins are going to be any cause for them to bind. If it moves freely, if you don't see any heavy pit, pitting, gouging, scoring, it's most likely going to be okay. Also another thing, if you take a wire brush, you clean all the rust out of here, it makes the assembly go a lot smoother. With it all cleaned off, we'll go ahead and blow it out. Remove all the debris. Put a coat of anti-seize around where the veins are going to travel. Also on the shafts that they go on. Now, a lot of guys will clean these. That's up to you. I've been doing this for a few years. I've never found any benefit in cleaning them other than inspecting them. I mean, I've never had a problem with these other than heavy pitting. So that's what I look for. I look for heavy pitting if I see that. They aren't serviced separately through Ford, so it's time to get another turbo. Now, again, you know, making sure your unison ring is not cracked. It's rare that they crack, but if they do, it's normally, you'll see it along in here at the thinnest point, of course, is where the cracks will be. There's a lot of guys that clean these all up. Again, if you feel the need to, it's up to you. If you did have seizing along the center housing, I would suggest cleaning this up if you plan on reusing it. But most likely, if you had seizing along here, you'll also find out that this is too worn and it has to be replaced. So that's just how it's worked out for me. Now, the, the shaft where we marked it here, you're going to find out that's, that's also where the shaft where the actuator's turning it. And it's also where all this is going to line up. We look at our mark here. Line up each one of these. Check for movement. I don't feel any binding. I'm pushing down on it. Don't feel any binding. Don't feel any problems. Now on here, same thing. Pretty much depending on which style you have, the only contact area you can see is here. Um, so that's what we want to pay attention to as we clean it. You can either go with your wire brush. 
or you can use this scotch bright pad, whichever works out best for you. Again, one of the important things to focus on is the unison ring binding on the turbo housing. If it's moving freely here, it's going to move freely going down the road. Depending on how severe yours was rusted or varnished, gummed up, coked up, you may have to take a while and clean this off. This one was not that bad. So it's not, it didn't take that much to clean it off. You can lay your ring back on, lining up your marks that we did before. I find it best if I point this straight down. Some of them will shift like this one's trying to. Two places that we have to line up is the dowel that lines up here in the body and also the unison ring with the actuator rod. You can feel when you get them both in it'll drop Depending on how long, it, how much time you took cleaning it up, it may just drop in, or you may just have to tap it. It should not take that much effort to get it to go down. I'm going to snug it up on the air ratchet and do the final torque by hand. We'll check, make sure there's no binding, making sure that it spins freely. That way I know I have it assembled properly. And there's another way too. If you want to verify that you have your unison ring lined up, take off the snap ring back here. I blow the dirt out of there just so I don't have any binding or any damage to the O-ring. This has a six millimeter thread in it. Six millimeter 1.0. I just put a bolt in there. Usually if I lubricate it, I sprayed all the taking all the dirt out of it. Okay, with the um, the back of this off, you're able to see what the actuator is moving as it goes down the road. I take a magnet, I can push it back and forth. It should move freely. Pretty much there's not much effort, not much resistance. And also if you look inside the turbo, you can see down the exhaust, you can see it moving. So I know I have it aligned, I know it's going to work when it goes back down the road. I clean and inspect the o-ring with a light coat of oil on it. Push it in gently, just enough to see where I can get my snap ring back in. Put my snap ring on. Make sure the snap ring is seated all the way around so I don't have it pop off and don't have any regrets. Pull this back out, move my bolt. I'll reinstall the actuator and it's ready to be reinstalled, reinstalled back on the vehicle.